Hello Confetti Club, it is Pixie, and this video is very, very long overdue. This video is about Pretty Cure. What is Pretty Cure? I have a spinny chair. Why do I talk about it so much? What's with all this stuff? What's with my tattoos? What is Pixie talking about? Let me scoot right up to you and get real close and we'll talk about it. This video is going to be an all about Pretty Cure video. Um, it's going to be spoiler free for the most part, but if you super like don't wanna know anything that's gonna go on, probably don't watch this video, probably just go in blind, but I'm gonna make it as spoiler free, beginner friendly, base level. Oh, we have a friend. I have taken some notes so please excuse me if I'm reading it all. Uh, we have a lot to get through. I am slightly concerned about how long I'm gonna be filming, but that's okay! This is an educational resource for the masses! Hi, okay, it's editing room Jillian right now. I don't know in what universe I thought I could manage to talk about every season of Pretty Cure and have it be like maybe 45 minutes long. Um, I ended up filming for like three, four hours, and after editing for three days, it's still over an hour. So I am going to provide you guys with timestamps and links because I do not expect everyone to want to sit down and listen to me talk about anime for an hour and a half. If you want some long form pixie content, perhaps treat this like a podcast if that's possible. Maybe someone could enjoy the whole thing. But um, if you are a human being with time and things to do, um, you can skip to whichever season you like. I'll put them here and also in the description for you. <laughs> so Pretty Cure, also known as Precure or Purikua, is a Magical Girl meta-series that started in 2004 and was created by Toei Animation. A meta-series is basically a big show made up of a bunch of little shows, sorta kinda. So basically, every season of Pretty Cure, for the most part, other than a couple of exceptions, can be watched completely independently on their own without needing to watch the other seasons for it to make sense. So almost asterisk, asterisk. Every season of Precure can be watched independently as a standalone 50 episode show, and the only instance where these seasons all overlap is in the crossover movies, the Precure All-Stars crossover movies. Um, we'll get to those. So I've been watching Precure since middle school when I first discovered Hardcatch Precure, probably via Tumblr. I'm always asked like, where did I find Precure? Where did I start? I literally can't remember. I've just, it's always been in my life. I discovered Precure in middle school, I think it was grade eight, and I stumbled across Heartcatch Precure, which I know is definitely a lot of people's firsts or a lot of people's faves. And it didn't take long before I was just a diehard fan and I have been watching Precure Weekly pretty much ever since. <laughs> I've seen every single episode, every single movie. I saw my cosplays from scratch. I am a bit of a collector, and of course I also have it tattooed on my body. So those are my Precure credentials, I guess. If you need a friendly neighborhood Precure expert, I'm your girl. I'm about to talk to you about my favorite thing ever. Precure, when I first got into it, was even more niche and unknown than it is now in the West. It is definitely one of those anime that is like super popular in Japan amongst the youth. And then it kind of trickles over into the West for a few people, but it's it's not on Crunchyroll, it's not on, I don't know. I want to say it hasn't quite peaked into like the mainstream in the West, but it's getting there over the past like five years. It's definitely had a peak. Over the years, I have been spamming the world and the internet with just my plethora of Precure vomit and love and awareness. And over these years, I've definitely come across a number of frequently asked Precure questions or FAPQ. So before I jump into the season by season review guide suggestion, thing. Um, I want to run over these uh, frequently asked questions really quick just to get them out of the way. Number one, do I have to watch the seasons in order? No. Number two, which season do you recommend starting with? I'm about to review every single season for you to pick and choose what sounds good to you, but when people just ask this and we don't have time to chat for an hour, I always say Go Princess, Hard Catch, or Futariwa. Where do you watch Precure? This is probably the number one most asked question, and it's the hardest to answer 
because Precure is not officially subbed into English. It hasn't been officially subbed into English since the very first season in 2004, and that didn't go over that well. That season was actually dubbed. We'll get into the dubs later as well, ooh. And since it's not officially subbed into English, people fan sub it, and since it is fan translated and subtitled, you can only watch it on third party fan streaming websites like GoGo Anime, Kiss Anime. I'm not telling you to go there because I mean, technically, it's a third party streaming service, and like, I mean, Precure didn't say okay. But the saddest thing is, there is no, there is no legal money paying option to watch all of Pretty Cure with English subtitles. So, but I mean, Go Go Anime is usually like the least sketchy one, but probably have an ad blocker in, in case you get a virus. Please don't sue me if you get a virus. You can watch the very first season on Crunchyroll, but I don't know why the quality <laughs> of Futariwa on Crunchyroll is literally as if they ripped it from a VHS. So I don't know what's going on there. You can watch Futariwa on Crunchyroll if you want the nostalgic crunch of the quality. And of course, recently they have also dubbed two seasons into English under the name Glitter Force on Netflix. We'll get into that. Where do you buy your Precure items and stuff? Um, I recommend Mandarake, Yahoo Japan Auctions, and eBay, but definitely be careful on eBay. And no one was asking, Actually, some people have asked this. My favorite cures are Cure Flora and Cure Marine. My favorite opening is probably the Splash Star opening, and my favorite ending is probably Shubidubi Speech Time. Thank you very much. And now, it is time to begin. Please welcome. Futari wa Purikua. The first of them all, the classic, the OG, the original duo, the founder. I didn't grow up watching Precure. I got into it in grade eight, like I mentioned. So I didn't actually watch it as a kid on YTV, which makes me very sad because I'm so into it now. This first season is one of those asterisk exceptions where Futariwa Precure actually has a directly relating sequel, which is Futariwa Precure Max Art. So technically I'm going to be reviewing and judging Futariwa and Max Art as one big hundred episode thing because they are kind of by and large the same season. And I have a wonderful rating list here that I will be applying to each and every one of the seasons for a nice, organized, streamlined Precure reviewing experience. <laughs> so basically the plot of Tariwa Precure and kind of Max Art is that Cures Black and White are called upon to protect and restore the Garden of Light, which is a magical world kind of in another dimension that is being threatened and attacked by the Dark Zone. It is very light versus dark. The overall themes are definitely like Cure Black, Cure White, Dark, Light. The plot of Futariwa is wholesome and pure, but it's also very bare bones. This definitely, maybe not bare bones is the right way to describe it, but since I watched this season after having watched at least 10 of the other Precure seasons, I watched Futari while like almost last on my list. I had kind of already seen this formula over and over and over and over, so it wasn't as innovative as probably it was when this originally came out. So if you wanna get a good idea for the basic structure of Precure, the monsters they fight, the typical kind of setup and plot and flow of the way the show is written, Futariwa is a great example of that. But I guess they all are kind of good examples of that, but this is where it started. Let's touch on the cures. So the cures we have are Cure Black, Cure White, and Shiny Luminous. We have Nagisa, who is fun and loud and sporty and clumsy and goofy. And then we have Hanukkah, who is kind of more sweet and quiet. She's not so like shy, which I appreciate. She's just a little like softer. Their bond and their friendship definitely is probably one of the strongest that I've seen in all. 15, I guess 16 now years of Precure. So if you really want to watch two characters that are best friends and you want to believe their bond and you want to really like have a best friend friendship party, uh, this is definitely the one for you. Shiny Luminous 
I feel like if I talk about her too much at all, I'll spoil her whole arc. But basically, she joins in Max Heart, and uh, she's great. The fairies! The fairies we have are Mipple, Mepple, Podden, and Nududden. They're all right. I mean, I really, really like their designs quite a lot. I was thinking about adding them into my tattoo because, oh yeah, these are the three I have tattooed, lol. Pooty kua, pooty kua, da da. Okay, I'm not gonna die today. The fairies are fine. I mean, I like their designs. I don't hate them. I find Mepple quite grating. I find Porin very grating. Lulin is also annoying, but I think I like her design too much <laughs> to actually dislike her. Mipple is pure. She's fine. <laughs> Mipple gets a pass. The villains in Futariwa and Max Heart probably are their biggest downfall as a season. <sighs> you guys, I have such a hard time with these villains. They are so similar. Their names are either completely forgettable or like the best thing ever <laughs> in the worst way, such as Pissard, Poisony, or the creatively named Evil King. I definitely would not recommend uh, Futariwa if you're looking for some like <laughs> like good villainage. They're just kind of there being dark and spooky and that's kind of that. The weapons definitely have that classic 2004-2005 nostalgic charm. I love them so much. I have a couple of them here. Um, yeah, I like to also rate the items because that's like a big part of Magical Girl anime. There were no wands or actual like weapony weapons. We had the sparkle braces. I guess we had the Hartiel baton, but it was all very like just objects that are used for magic. There were no like swords or sabers or like guns. Have we ever had a precure gun? No. I, that would honestly, I bet they could find a way to make that not violent and just like a super cute precure ray gun. Anyway, overall I give Futariwa precure and Max heart and overall 10 Miracle Lights out of 10. I cannot imagine giving this a rating less than 10, and that might be my nostalgia goggles. I know I didn't grow up with it, but it's still like, they're the OG, like they formed it, like those are the mothers. <laughs> so yeah, definitely give this a 10 out of 10. Um, maybe if I wasn't so fond of it and didn't have them tattooed, I would give it a 7 out of 10 just for like the villains and the plot and stuff, but like, you should really watch it. Now, having a look at Splash Star versus Max Heart, you may think to yourself, hmm, I can see a couple of observations here perhaps that are similar between the two. It will still baffle me to this day why they decided to make two new characters and play them as new, completely separate people, but have them look almost the same as the original two main characters we have been following for 100 episodes. It is confusing. It is a very weird choice for them to take creatively but I loved it. I loved it. I'm sorry. If you were getting sick of Nagisa and Honoka and you were kind of like, okay, I've seen enough of these two, don't watch Splash Star. If you fell deeply, deeply in love with them as I did and all you want is more of those sweet little ginger and navy haired angels, <laughs> you might just unironically love Splash Star like I did. I'm aware of all of its faults, of which there are many. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you them now because I feel like people that aren't me will not forgive it in this way. So like, I don't know. Let me give you my unbiased info and even though I'm biased as hell. <laughs> the plot of Splash Star again is a little similar to the plot of Futariwa, uh, Cures, Bloom, and Egret. <laughs> also, their names are weird. Everything about Splash Star is weird. Bloom and Egret are called upon to protect and revive the fountains. There are these different fountains in these different areas and they have to go around and revive them because they have been like sucked of all their life and goodness. It's, you know, you're getting the similar vibe. Happy Shiny World is attacked by Evil Dark World, and the only ones that can help are the Precure. I eat this sh up. <laughs> Even though I know how it's gonna end every time, I eat it up! Cures, Bloom, and Agret, um, aka Saki and Mai, they're fine. I mean, again, 
they're kind of like Nagisa and Hanukkah clones, so it's hard for me to not like them because I like them so much. I thought I might like not like them because it's like you're like them but but different but ah. Uh, there's some beautiful imagery with these sunflowers and, and the crisp bright blue sky to represent wind and the warmth of the golden sunflowers. However, other than that one specific attack, this is the ugliest anime I have ever watched. Hear me out. I knew before going to art college that it was just kind of ugly. But after doing, <laughs> after going through school, it is literally so distracting to watch anything in this anime. The backgrounds are bizarre. The color harmony is not there. <laughs> there are colors, there is no harmony. The whole, th it's dark and muddy and gross and spiky and the cures themselves are communally mocked for their ugliness. I'm so sorry Saki and Mai, but damn you guys were done dirty. It's yeah, if you like the designs, I'm very sorry. I just, I think they're comically bad. And that's not hate, I just, it's pure love and joy. The fairies are pretty forgettable and kind of got on my nerves as well. We have Moop and Foop and other ones. I literally don't even remember their names. It was very mipple and mepple in my opinion. Which again, I enjoyed because I wanted to like, you know, feed myself more of that same good, good precure mineral. The one thing I will say about Splashtar that I definitely thought was obviously improved was the villains. Now, there are definitely still a lot of villains that suffer from the same like, dumb name itis. One villain that stood out to me so much that I wrote his name down was Kintaleski. He's definitely, definitely stands out amongst the bunch. I think he's probably my favorite villain. I mean, I like the cha-cha-cha guy. I don't even remember his name. Yeah, I think Slashar definitely had a couple more fun, entertaining, goofy comic relief villains, and those are always my fave. The weapons for me are just so weird. I still don't even quite understand what they're supposed to be. Overall, Miracle Lights out of 10, Splash Star gets a four. This pains me because I love them all and giving any Precure season less than five like hurts my soul, but since we are judging it, Against other Precure seasons, it is only fair that Splash Star gets a four. This is where things start to spice up. Adding to the mix, we have a whole set of five Precure in rainbow colors, in rainbow uniforms, with all unique personalities and friendships with each other. There's fucking swords now. There's cute fairies that turn into hot boys hot boys <laughs> my windows open my neighbors can hear me yes break your five is definitely such an underrated season and yes break your five is also one of those big asterisk boys because it has a sequel, which is Yes, Precure 5, Go Go. These are the only two sequel ones though. That's why it's uncommon. So I'm gonna be judging Yes, Precure 5 and Go Go together again as a 100 ep thingy. The plot of Yes, Precure 5 now still involves saving kingdoms. Precure pretty much always revolves around saving like a world. But in this case, they have to collect the 55 pinkies, which are like little fairy-like things that are floating around, and they capture them in their magical little pinky catcher bracelet things, like these sick flip-out your Apple watches, dude. And each pinky has a unique ability and like name, and they all have unique designs, and it straight up is like Precure Pokemon Tamagotchi extravaganza. It definitely made it more interesting for me. I think having 55 of them definitely helped with the pacing. It doesn't show every single one, which is also kind of nice. The cures. We have Cure Dream, Cure Rouge, Cure Lemonade, Cure Mint, Cure Aqua, and Milky Rose. Like I mentioned, this is the first season where all of the cures represent a rainbow color and they all- Oh, actually I have them back here, hee <laughs> hee! Nozomi is a cheerful pink bubbly leader. Um, 
If you've watched any other seasons of Preakyo, that description might be a little familiar, but this is definitely the first time they did it, and this is kind of what laid the Precure foundation groundwork. Cure Rouge is the sporty, fiery one. Cure Lemonade is the sweet, hard-working idol one. Cure Mint is the shy, writer, librarian one. And Cure Aqua, I think, was student council president? No offense, I definitely found her the most forgettable. But the friendships, the interactions, the stories, all of it is so, so greatly improved. Having five, again, then six characters in Yes, Precure 5 Gogo -Go with Milky Rose, um, there are so many more ways for them to interact and bond and ah. Let's talk about the fairies. This is something that also makes Yes, Precure 5 and Yes, Precure 5 Gogo -Go so, so good is the fairies. We have Coco and Nuts, which are two, like, hamster rodent style fairies that turn into hot boys. Okay, this show is for young children and they're not that hot. I'm probably just being gross, <laughs> but they turn into like human men that run a shop and the shop is where a lot of the girls like pass their time and work and hang out. It kind of becomes their like unofficial Precure headquarters and I am such a sucker for any show with any sort of magical HQ or magical hangout. Ooh, I love that. Joined later, we have Syrup, who is a bird-type fairy who turns into a giant bird that flies around. He has some weird, there's some weird love triangle stuff going on as well. Maybe not love triangle, but romance. It's It's been a few years since I've watched this one, but I remember actually enjoying the romance. I, I think actually Yes, Precure 5 and Go-Go might be one of the more romantic Precure series, if that's something you're looking for. Milky Rose, I don't want to talk about her too much. The, the sixth ranger's slash like late joiner ones are always hard to talk about because you don't want to spoil, but I love her. The villains are also quite, quite strong in Yes, Precure 5 and Go Go. The main antagonist corporation in Yes, Precure 5 and Go Go is Cryasu Corporation. No, oh my god, oh wait, no it's not. That's in Hokuto. What am I talking about? Nightmare. No, it's Nightmare. <gasps> I've watched too many episodes of this. He is a toad, and his human form is that of a large, unkempt man. I didn't know that I had a cameo in this show. One of my favorite things about Yes, Precure 5 is definitely the villain setup. Um, the antagonist in these series is, for the most part, like a modern day Japanese corporation so it's definitely a little like wink wonk fourth wall like society has problems and i always love a little bit of that i love the imagery of like the big skyscraper again i just i like the whole corporation business modern day like japan salary man turns evil thing. We have some just fantastic characters such as Boonbee. Boonbee is again more of a comic relief kind of villain, but he also is, I'd say, a bit scary. I remember, I remember him being not totally just like goofy like some other villains in Breaker. But yeah, um, villains, Top notch, very, very good. Definitely, if you want good villains and a little bit of romance, yes, Precure 5 is for you. The weapons are pretty sick. Um, this was the first year they had like kind of a swordy weapon. It kind of looks like a lightsaber. Oh, I have it back here, but I'll put a photo just because <laughs> this is a very delicate setup. And they also had just really cool interactions. The attack that the girls have with the Cure Floret or the the Cure the Break Your Lightsaber is very very cool, very badass. Um, there's a lot of just the the lines and the leading lines artistically in that attack are very powerful, very cool. The way they use the pinky to catch is very cool. Uh, definitely, the the items were more interactive and fun and interesting and probably would make someone want to buy them more to play with them. I don't know if that's why they did that. Miracle Lights out of 10. Yes, Precure 5 and 5 Go Go get a 9. Fresh Precure is kind of an interesting season and I have a lot of conflicting feelings on it because I really did not like it at first. This is one Precure season that I tried to watch and I got like 
maybe under 10 episodes in and literally left it for like years. I was just like, oh, I don't care. I'll come back to it. But they introduced a bunch of new stuff in Fresh, including the CG dance endings. There is a dance slash kind of idol theme as well as a fruit theme going on here. Um, it's a bit much, but I mean, you get kind of used to it. The fruit theme is mostly like an aesthetic thing with their names being Cure Peach, Cure Berry, Cure Pine, and Cure Passion. But then the dance theme is just kind of what they do. Again, this was the year that they did the first CGI dance ending, which of course is a famous Precure staple now. They always have their cute little dances. I always learn every single one. It's in my nature. The plot is okay. The characters are fine. It, it does have one of my favorite twists about mid-series. Definitely has one of my favorite Sixth Rangers. I would say this has one of the darkest moments in a lot of Precure, but it's one moment. It's like one episode that's really kind of dark and hard hitting, and then I find that that doesn't really stay with it. They kind of just like go, oh, well that happened, and then move on. Anyway, uh, as spoiler free as I can make it, let's say they tried some more fun plot twisty stuff. If you want to see what they did with that, you can check it out. Cure Peach is fine. Cure Pine, I mean, she likes animals. Cure Berry does some sort of idly modeling behavior. And Cure Passion, again, Six Rangers, I can't talk too much about because spoilies, but she's fine. <laughs> the fairies are probably what makes this show so unbearable for me. Tart is fine. A tart reminds me a little bit of Keto-chan from Cardcaptor Sakura, but more annoying and less fun, but I can cope with him. It's the f***ing baby. In Fresh Precure, there is a baby thing named Chiffon, and this baby contains like the ultimate power thing that could destroy or save the universe, and the evil dudes are trying to get it, so the girls need to protect the baby. And if you are not getting the hint, I do not like this plot very much. I have no emotional attachment to Chiffon. I do not care what happens to her. <laughs> so heartless. But the issue is that the baby repeats the same phrase every episode pretty much all the time and it goes over and over and it is so slow and so annoying and so monotonous and so actually cringe. I do not use the word cringe for many things. I do not often cringe. I'm a wholesome gal who thinks everyone should do whatever they want. But the way that this stupid baby says that stupid thing, man, it makes me want to die. One thing I actually liked about Fresh was probably the villains. I didn't find them overly uninteresting. And I really like their designs as well. We have East, Wester, and Solar. Some girl named Northa comes in. Oh my God, their names are the friggin', friggin' directions. East, West, South, North, I'm dumb! I'm, <laughs> Fresh also does have a pretty cool attack that I like. I remember when I watched it for the first time, I was like, I think this might be one of my favorite Precure group attacks. I like the way that they have to run in like an actual space with a floor. I just, I like the running and the passing because it feels like something you could physically do in real life. The weapons are some like cell phony things again, but we do also get an actual magical girl wand, which is pretty sick. We have the, what are they called? Cure stick? Just straight up the cure stick. Oh, passion harp. Yes, we get a harp as well. I think that's the first instrument one. Overall, I give Fresh Precure four Miracle Lights out of 10. Not the worst, it's not unwatchable. You can definitely enjoy it, but uh, I'd say it's beneath a five for me. Hardcatch Precure is 
probably the most communally renowned as the best Precure series or just like the most fan favorite. Heartcatch was the first season I watched. My first magical girl wand was from Heartcatch. Cure Marine has been my favorite cure for like ever. I tie her with Flora because I literally refuse to pick. <laughs> I'm just putting, I'm just gonna put down my phone and just talk about this like from the heart. One of the first things you'll notice when you look at Heartcatch Precure as opposed to the other seasons of Precure is that it has a very distinct, bright, colorful, unique, simplified, that's not a word, simplified art style. And this artist is actually the same wonderful soul that did Ojima Jodori Me. I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but I will put it somewhere here very big. Basically, the whole shtick in Heartcatch is that every person inside of themselves has a heart flower or a kokoro no hana. And in that heart flower is where you keep your deep utmost feelings. And if you are sad or you're having a bad day, your heart flower can begin to wilt. And when your heart flower wilts, it is basically vulnerable for the evil desert apostle people to be like, ooh, I see that wilted heart. And then they turn you into a monster and they try to turn the world into a desert. I don't know how better to explain the plot, but it's pretty sick. Really cool thing about Heartcatch as well is that each heart flower is a different actual type of real flower that actually correlates to Japanese flower language and symbolism and stuff. So you can actually learn about the real meanings behind flowers and stuff throughout this show and they almost always tie into the actual reason the person was sad or the reason that their heart got captured. It is just so well thought out and detailed and there's so many little beautiful intricacies to heart catch that make it so good. The fairies are delightful. We have Kofure and Shipure, uh, Popurhi and Kuron. Their names are weird, but they are wonderful. The cures themselves, we have Cure Blossom, Cure Marine, Cure Sunshine, and Cure Moon. Like Blossom is a very unique pink lead because she is not bubbly and energetic and leaderful. She's actually shy and super insecure and super weak and like not typical, which is super interesting and cool. She has these big glasses and she arrives new to school and she's very like, oh, I don't know, just moved to a new town. I hope I can make friends. Marine, Erica, is in the back of the class and literally like harasses her and like low-key bullies her. And that is the foundation of their never-ending bond. Blossom and Marine are one of my favorite Precure duos. We also have our first androgynous Precure. I don't want to spoil that too, too much because I love Sunshine so much and I think that her story could definitely benefit some people that are looking for a magical warrior role model that has been through some difficulties with like gender identity and that sort of thing. So um, Cure Sunshine is wonderful. I don't like Moonlight, but uh, my reasoning is just because I don't really like any characters that I deem to be cheap. I don't like characters that aren't nice. I also have this issue when I watch reality TV. I cannot root for you if you are mean to other people. I always have to root for the nicest, kindest person. I just find Moonlight to just, I just, I don't think we'd be friends. The villains, Ah, Okay, I don't wanna talk about Harcatch for the entire video cause I could, but they have some of my favorite villains. We have the sassy, feminine Sassarina. We have the tough, slightly spooky Kumo Jackie. And we have my husband, which is Kobraja. Uh, if you want to know anything about him, one of his attacks is like shooting out autographed photos of himself. And I just love him. <laughs> he is so funny. The weapons are some of the most beautiful in my opinion, especially the flower tact. Again, this was my first ever magical girl item. Overall, Hard Catch Breaker gets a 10 out of 10 for me. Just hands down. Moving on up, we have Sweet Precure. Sweet Precure is a pretty good one. Um, it definitely is one of the more stronger themes in the early days of Precure, the theme being music. 
This series smacks you over top of the head with the music theme so hard and will not let you forget that this series is about music and singing. I'm going to be honest guys, and this is kind of sad, but I watched the very first episode of Sweet Precure probably three times over the course of like three years because I could not get past the instruments with eyeballs. <laughs> I did ask. It was so goofy for me that I watched the first episode as an attempt to watch the whole thing three times and just could not handle the goofy looking trumpets. But they only show this is like the very first scene and then the stupid eyeballs go away. So <laughs> um, I think the plot is probably the most solid so far we have. Um, like I mentioned that infamous first episode um, is very important because it sets up the whole plot. Basically every year, this is, yeah, is a really cool plot. In this magical kingdom called Majorland, there is a song that is called the Melody of Happiness, and they have to sing this song once a year in like a magical ceremony, like sporting event, <laughs> national anthem style, and singing this Melody of Happiness once a year, like keeps the land happy. It's their like regular maintenance to like, you know, just like keep the serotonin levels flowing. And every year they select a different member of the Majorland Society to sing it, which I'm pretty sure is always a cat. <laughs> They're musical cat magical girls, it's the best! So yeah, the whole show opens with our magical friend, fairy, Hummy, who's pretty delightful. Uh, Hummy is one of those fairies that's like super annoying, but you just love him so much. And Hummy is going to sing the melody of happiness, but right as she is about to, Evil Cat Siren comes in, scatters the notes across the lands, and no melody of happiness. What are we going to do? Who could ever collect these notes as to put them back together so we can sing our happy song? Let's call up the Precure. The Cures in this season start as a duo of Cure Melody and Cure Rhythm, and then we later add in Cure Beat and Cure Muse. Melody and Rhythm, their human names, Hibiki and Kanade, definitely are... They scrap a lot at the start of the show, and even throughout it, there's a lot of bickering that happens, which is interesting because we haven't really had that so far. We haven't had a pair of best friends that, like, kind of have a love-hate relationship, but I personally found it a little difficult to watch. I just, you know, it was just kind of like, oh, they're fighting again over the same stuff again. But that's just me. I, <laughs> I'm very like, life is hard enough. Day-to-day -day is hard enough. I want my media to be like just a wholesome, pure getaway sometimes. So when you turn on Pretty Cure and it's just like two best friends fighting, it's like, ladies. The later characters Cure Beat and Cure Muse are very, very, very interesting to the point where, again, I don't know if I can talk about them too much without spoilers, but Cure Beat is one of my favorite cures that join later. I think I can say that without spoiling much. Um, Cure Muse is just super fun, and she's one of the first cures that is quite a bit younger than the others. I also really love Siren as a cat villain. Here under weapons, I have please stop no. I made a lot of these notes actually like as I watched it throughout the past billion years of my life. So some of these were written by like 16 year old me. Please stop no. Why did I hate the weapons so much? The attacks were definitely more tame and not as like aggressive because it's so music themed. We have a lot of music themed weapons, which I have never been a massive fan of and I don't know why. I don't know, I'm just like, really? You're really gonna beat me, the big bad monster, with a rainbow piano? A actually, that sounds pretty sick. Miracle Lights out of 10, I give Sweet an 8. It's a pretty solid series, it is super beautiful and colorful, the costume designs are drool worthy plot is pretty good and interesting cures are pretty cool yeah i recommend sweet it's sweet the sweet life of hibiki and kanade i'd say smile precure is now the most popular season of precure because 
because of its dubbing and Americanization into the Glitter Force series on Netflix. Glitter Force is by and large just an English dub of Smile Precure. They've also more recently released Glitter Force Doki Doki, which is by and large another Americanized English dub of Doki Doki Precure. These are not bad things, it's just good to understand what's going on because some people totally do not understand what Precure is and how it relates to Glitter Force. It's just a, an Americanized dub. Think card captors. The whole plot of Smile is fairy tales and storybooks. And I think they use this plot quite well. They have a really great plot device of this like countdown clock to doom, which I really, really like. And I found that that helped give it a good forward moving pace each and every episode because each episode the clock would like tick forward one more. Um, yeah, I, I really think that helped the pacing quite a bit. For the cures, we have Cure Happy, Sunny, Peace, March, Beauty. I can't do it without doing the song. For the cures, we have Cure Happy, Cure Sunny, Cure Peace, Cure March, and Cure Beauty. Cure Happy is the epitome of a pink, bubbly lead. She is just happy. She's all, her whole saying is that she wants to be ultra happy. It's just her thing is like, I'm pink, I'm here, I like storybooks, let's go. Sunny, I have to say, this is probably the first cure that I think is too similar to a past cure. I find Cure Sunny and Cure Rouge almost clone-like. Um, they both play soccer, or no, I think Sunny has volleyball, like, ooh, hoo, hoo, big diff! Yeah, Sunny is very rouge -ish. she's like the sporty, short-haired one. Peace is definitely a fan favorite as well, and definitely my favorite from this season. Um, Peace is like the shy, little, lightning mangaka one, <laughs> like, is just so unique. So she's an artist, and she's drawing to become uh, a mangaka, which is someone who writes manga, I'm probably saying that horrifically wrong. And her power is lightning, which is just a funny juxtaposition, because she's so like, oh, like, hi everybody, like, I'll just be drawing over here with my f***ing lunchbox. And then her power is like, Bleh! Cure March, the green one. She's pretty green. Um, March is supposed to be like spring in, in, in Glitter Force. She's Glitter Spring and her name is April. So if that's getting the theme across to you, that might help. She plays soccer and she has a big family and that's kinda it. Um, I would love to have seen Rouge and March like do sports practice together. Did they ever do that? And then Beauty, sadly to say, I find is even less developed. Like I honestly, cannot remember one thing about Beauty other than I think she's also student council president and I think she does archery. Smile Precure definitely feels like they went back to their Yes Precure 5 roots but made it more like sparkly and modern with the new animation and art they have now because Yes Precure 5 and Go Go I find definitely has that nostalgic feel like you can tell it was animated in 2000 whatever it's six. The fairies are okay. I remember really liking Candy. Candy has a brother named Pop that is pretty fun. He's like a little lion boy who like thinks he's like a very strong man, but in reality he is a tiny little lion. I loved the villains in Smile. I thought they were really strong. Akaoni is hilarious. I love their little bants together. Um, the witch, who I think her name is straight up Majorica. The villains again follow the like storybook fairy tale theme. There's like the red devil and the witch and then the big bad wolf basically, his name's Wolfrun. And their whole thing is that they're painting the future black. So like they take open this book and then they take this like evil ink and they're like Pah! and then it's like making the world a bad end instead of a happy end. They really like push the fairy tale theme down your throat. The weapons were awesome, the attacks were pretty awesome. Overall, I think Smile gets like a pretty solid eight Miracle Lights out of 10. Doki Doki Precure. I believe this is one of the first ones I watched as it was airing weekly and I never went back. The plot of Doki Doki is very hard to follow, but I think that makes it best. There's a lot of like, 
I, I don't want to spoil it even at all because I think the plot is really, really good. So I'm not going to spoil it at all. But basically, the plot involves a lot of like, who's this? Who's that? Is that you? But that's that. And whose dad did what? At what time? And was that morally okay? Or perhaps not? Like, <laughs> there's, there's moral dilemmas. There's like identity confusion. There's like a new rule with in precurdom about like how long you can magically fight there's a lot of cool things that doki doki introduced um and yeah i think it's actually kind of an underrated season the theme of this season is playing cards weirdly enough the cures we have are cure heart cure diamond cure rosetta cure sword and cure ace and the kingdom is the trump kingdom like trump card not like america <laughs> sorry guys the cures on their own are not the strongest part of this season, sadly. I mean, I really liked Heart. Uh, I find she is kind of one of my favorite just base level, like, ganky pink leads. Cure Diamond, I cannot tell you a single interesting thing about her. I think she is yet another dark blue cure that was student council president. Maybe I just think they're all student council president. Maybe I'm wrong. I loved Cure Rosetta. She basically bought her way into Precurdom with her magical riches. She is delightful and soft and rich as hell and reminds me of Tomoyo a lot, actually. I love Kirozetta. She is my favorite of the team. And also, come on, a warm and sunny spot. I love a warm and sunny spot. Again, with the I can't support characters that are bitchy. Cure sword. Cure sword's bitch. Sorry. The fairies are fun. I mean, I have written down meh, okay, but Lance is king. So I guess I liked Lance when I watched this. The villains. I love the villains. They have this cool little like HQ again with the with the cool magical HQ even though they're evil. They have like a bowling alley and like a neon sign and like there's this one shot where like she's having like a cheeky sip and also like their costumes are weird. They remind me kind of of Sailor Moon in a way, Sailor Moon villain costumes. And of course Regina is Oh, I think I like Regina more than any of the cures, and I think that might not be an unpopular opinion. I really like the transformation. I like how it is a heart that they managed to make into the letters to spell love. I think that was super creative and cool. In Heart's arrow attack, I really like that it turns into a full form, like full size bow and arrow, um, instead of just keeping it to like the teeny tiny toy version. Yeah, overall, Doki Doki also gets 8 Miracle Lights out of 10. Happiness Charge Precure Did not charge up my happiness. In fact, it drained it. <laughs> this season for me was so lackluster, so, so just substanceless and sad. Happiness Charge's theme was it was the 10 year anniversary of Precure 2 so like I was super excited and super hype and they did this really cool thing where at the beginning of a bunch of episodes not every single one but for the beginning of several episodes they had this cute little thank you from each of the cures leading up to that point with a little like throwback reference and a like thanks for supporting us for 10 years now let's watch the show and honestly my favorite part of happiness charge was the bit before the show started where the cures just said hi. <laughs> I do not relate to any of the characters. I do not quite get the theme. Um, the cures we have are Cure Lovely, Cure Princess, Cure Honey, and Cure Fortune. It's like Cure Lovely is like you took a pink lead but sucked out all the personality and made the art uglier. And their costumes are like, like navy and gray vests with uh, I just, I'm sorry. I'm really struggling to say anything positive about Happiness Charge because I just personally really didn't click with it. And some people love it and that is okay. Haha, <laughs> don't want any breaker fights going on. Plot, I wrote, okay, I liked Mirage and the whole teleporting mirrors thing and blue was cool. Okay, I wrote a positive thing once. Uh, yeah, there, there was this whole thing with mirrors and you could use the mirrors to go into the other worlds. I, I mean, that was cool. There ended up being some weird romance. I don't think 
quite, uh, I, don't, I literally don't even remember. Cure Princess is like if you took Cure Marine, but took away the parts that make her charming and just made her more bratty and entitled. Cure Princess is my favorite cure from this series, and even then I find her selfish and obnoxious and loud and just still unpleasant. And she's still my favorite. And she's still pretty bad. Cure Honey just, like, she's just kind of there. She sings about rice every episode. It's long and, and, and that's all I have to say. I had a really hard time with Fortune. I just feel like she kind of wallowed in her mourning and like depression and didn't really ever try to make herself better or improve herself. And for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> Awesome. Hi. Okay, I just had to take a break to charge my battery because even though I started with a fully charged battery, I don't even want to tell you how long I've been filming this. It's going to be cut down a lot. I was talking about happiness charge. Ah, uh, yes. The fairies I just found kind of forgettable. Um, I did kind of like Glassan. I like that she has glasses. I like uh, when she is the drummer in the end song and... I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's really just not a lot to say about the whole thing. I mean, I feel like I'm gonna get some happiness charge sh fans shutting me down in the comments. Feel free to counter any of this. This is all just my own opinion. Oh, okay, villains. I say yes, yes, yes. The best part was Oreski and Mirage and the other ones, the villains were v good. Can I write like a person? <laughs> My notes to myself are <laughs> horrific. I did enjoy the villains, actually. I really liked Oreski and the super cute one. I have a huge issue with the attack mechanics for this season. That's like the nerdiest sentence that's ever come out of my mouth. <laughs> the transformation item is a device called the Kudin mirror change or something. It is like a mirror flip up supposed to be thing that you insert these like semi translucent cards into to create different outfits. And the different outfits for the cures give them different like capabilities and attacks. And they're all dance attacks. Maybe I'm just a big loser and I'm super lame and I'm a dance hater, but I do not like these dance attacks, guys. Some of them are kind of fun, I guess, but I feel like Happiness Charge kind of replaced a lot of the fun, magical, spectacle, like swords and wands and arrows and beams and stuff that I love. And a lot of it was just like, Lollipopu hippu hoppu and like ooh cha cha cha. I didn't like like any of their outfits. They got all new outfits for these different attacks. So there's like an Aloha cure princess, and there's like a spicy samba cure lovely. And I just I don't think any of the designs are nice. I'm sorry. I just I think this is another pretty ugly season. I feel like that's a really mean word, but just on an artistic standpoint, I find the colors and designs and just the art in Happiness Charge to be... Honestly, guys, I think it is worse, perhaps, than Splash Star. This might be my least favorite season for, like, the way it looks. Sorry! The issue is... The music is pretty good. The Happiness Charge opening theme is like pretty freaking sick and powerful. The end songs are like fun and happy. Um, I really like the innocent forms. I think those costumes are actually really beautiful. I wish they had fun, beautiful, colorful costumes the whole time and not just like kind of as a power up part way through. Oh, and the romance is so stupid. This series has the most pointless, go-nowhere romance with the most boring, brown-haired guy. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's this guy named Seiji, and he's kind of just like, <laughs> they're roadie, I guess. Like, Mary Sue, if she was a guy. Morty. Seustress. Honestly, Miracle Lights out of 10, I'm here, I have it a 5. I'm going to drop my past score to a 3. I'm sorry. I hope you like this show so that someone can get some enjoyment out of it. 
However, a good pre-cure season one day would rise again. And that season would be... Go Princess Precure is my favorite season of Precure. Did I say that about Heartcatch? Um, they're kind of both. Go Princess Precure, in my opinion, is the best season of Precure. The theme is princesses and dreams, and the cures we have are Cure Flora, Cure Mermaid, Cure Twinkle, and Cure Scarlet. This series is the other one I have referenced on my body. I have a giant thigh tattoo that says strong, kind, beautiful that I got to cover myself harm scars. So needless to say, I'm very, very biased because the series is like so close to my heart. The series starts off with our main pink lead, Kira Flora, aka Haruka, enrolling in this amazing, beautiful, princessy, like boarding school, which is called Noble Academy. And it is there where she meets her other friends, her princessy friends, and they all become pre cure together uh, to help protect people's dreams. So basically, the plot of Go Pre is that the princess pre cure, this is like one of the first ones where they had like a secondary title other than Precure. The Princess Precure are summoned to protect the Hope Kingdom from Dispear and her these dark evil lackeys. Um, the villains, so strong. The cures, so strong. The plot, amazing. The attacks, impeccable. The transformations, breathtaking. I can't think of anything in this series that I didn't like. Cure Flora is a bright, energetic pink lead, as usual. She is kind of extra special in my heart just because she is so, so, so determined to fight for her dreams and really, really pushes that narrative the whole time and she will give up everything and anything to fight for her dreams and to kind of better herself. And I just think she shows so many amazing qualities. I love Cure Flora. Cure Mermaid is a wonderful character. She's just soft, sweet. She is student council president, okay, but she's not exactly like a cobalt dark blue cure. She's a little bit more of a cyan. And I like that. They definitely switched things up. They didn't just, you know, pump out another dark blue smart kind of serious one that's on the student council. Cure Mermaid, obviously has like underwater mermaidy powers, which is friggin' cool. Her design is beautiful. Did I mention the designs are beautiful? I just, oh, the art, ah! We see her love of animals. We see her relationship with Tina the dolphin. Tina was Steve's favorite character when we watched Go Princess. Oh yeah, I've watched Go Princess like four times because I make everyone who comes into my life watch it again with me. I'm like, oh, welcome to my life. You need this before you can level up. Your Twinkle is wonderful. She is another yellow idly character, which we haven't had since Cure Lemonade. Um, I love Cure friggin' Twinkle. Kirara is fantastic. She is a fashion model and kind of not really idol. I think she just mostly models and she's following in her mom's footsteps and there's a lot of really great um, narration and episodes about her path and her like road to her career and her dreams and why she's doing it and should she be doing it. Same with Mina Me. Like all of them have such great complex stories and development. Cure Scarlet, um, the sixth ranger. Sixth ranger is just the term for the late joiner. I learned that on their interwebs from the cool Precure tubers, which I will recommend at the end and in the description so you can see it anytime. My favorite episode of Precure ever, 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 ever is um, Cure Scarlet's episode. So I don't want to say too much about her because I want you guys to watch this if you want and to have the full experience and just like feel the chills down your spine like I did. Hopefully, hopefully if it touches you so as it did I. There's also a very cute and slightly spicy prince. We have Prince Kanata of Hope Kingdom. The fairies are great. I love them. I mean, puff, wonderful, sweet, cute, soft not annoying at all. I didn't find her annoying at all. I usually find all the fairies at least a little annoying. Puff is just a good girl. Our love was probably a little bit annoying, but he's also like a sweet little guy. And they have their own motivations and futures and careers too. Every single character in this show pretty much gets development and 
I love that. Let's talk about villains. My favorite Prick Your Villain ever is Shut. Um, and the villains are Shut, Lock, and Close, and then later there's Stop and Freeze. They kind of look like Dead Mouse. I usually just refer to them as Dead Mouse. Um, I love Shut, Lock, and Close. Despair also is probably one of my favorite big bads. She is actually scary and intimidating. It's not just like you never see the villain till the end and then it's just a big scary mountain with a mouth. Yeah, Shut's my favorite villain ever. He is a little reminiscent of Cobraja just because he's like long-haired blue villain who's beautiful and vain and I like that for some reason. The items in Gopri are also really cool. We have the princess perfume. I did a whole video on this when I was a baby. I loved the wand. I love the attacks. The attacks are just beautiful. One of my favorite things in Magical Girl animes is when you get to see the attacks kind of from an outsider's perspective instead of just the normal recycle stock animation. This was the series where I noticed they kind of had more of that, where you would just see all of them shooting their attacks from the outside. That's really specific, but I like seeing that a lot. Miracle Lights, oh, okay. <laughs> Neen, can you please fight this fly somewhere else? <laughs> She's on the hunt. I know, honey. Miracle Lights out of 10, Gopri definitely gets a 10. Mahotsukai Precure, aka Maho Girls Precure, aka Witch Precure question mark? This season, I was so, 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 so excited for and it kind of let me down. Mahotsukai roughly translates to magic user or like magic person or like witch kinda. And it is very, very witch themed. It is like borderline like Harry Potter Hogwarts themed. There are brooms, there's a snail train, there's a weird school, there's a headmaster with a big hat. I was super hyped when I saw the logo, I was super hyped when I saw the designs, cure miracle, cure magical, their costumes are just like pure pink and purple witch girls, I was down. We have cures miracle and magical and later on we also add in cure felice. Miracle and magical, I mean there's not a ton to say, Mirai cure miracle is just a bright bubbly pink lead again. She's ginger I, there's really not a lot to say rico is actually slightly interesting just in her pessimism as a precure my issue with these two is that they are a duo they are miracle and magical they are always together they have to be holding hands with mohrun that's the weird thing about this series is that the transformation item is a bear oh there he is so if they don't have all three of them no precure. But there was nothing in this series that convinced me that these girls would actually be friends or like care about each other. Maybe I'm heartless, but like I was really looking and digging and trying to like feel some sort of emotional connection. I was trying to find some sort of episode, some sort of scene, some sort of instance that would convince me that these girls really do love each other and are best friends. But it's kind of just them fighting and Rico being pessimistic and Mirai being like, haha, whatever. And uh, I don't know, I don't know. I didn't get a lot out of them. I really struggled with this one so much that I can't even find a simplified way to explain to you the plot because it is so messy and all over the place. This was another series where they had items that gave them different outfits and those outfits gave them different attacks. So instead of kind of adding more cures, they kept it to two cures and then a third and just gave them outfit attacks. I'm never really fond of that. I don't know why. And I love dancing and outfits. So like that's saying a lot. Honestly, okay, the villains in this series is what really, really kills it for me. I just found them all so forgettable and pointless and just evil for evil's sake. We also absolutely do not have enough time with any of the villains to really get to know them, save for maybe like the one guy that ends up being important later on. 
But other than that, I find that all of them were kind of just like, here's a new villain. Oh, he got defeated. Here's the next one. Oh, they defeated him. Oh, time for the next one. Oh, that one's gone now. It's, it's like, I couldn't get connected to any of them. I couldn't really care. I didn't really get why they were fighting. I didn't really believe that they really cared or were evil. I felt like they were all just kind of brainwashed or following orders. And that is just such a cop out -y way of writing villains in my opinion. I'm sorry. I love Precure and it feels bad to sit here and like rip it apart, but I wanna give you a fair review. Like, I don't even remember any of these villains' names. Who's, who's Labut? Who's Shackins? Who's Benigio? <laughs> If there's one thing that does save this series, it is the artwork and just the overall aesthetic. I find the costume designs beautiful, the item and weapon designs beautiful, the logo, the artwork, the backgrounds, like just everything I think about Mahotsuka is pretty well done. Um, the, the, the magic world perhaps has some interesting inspirations. The snail train I never quite could get down with. I feel like I would rather Uber. There were some troubling similarities to Harry Potter that I had. Yeah, the weapons I thought were absolutely beautiful. I would love to get the friggin' Lankle stick one day, despite it being called a Lankle stick. Overall, Miracle Lights out of 10 for Mahutsukai or Maho Girls Precure is 6 out of 10. Not bad! I would rewatch it again. I think I would enjoy it, rewatching it again. But, uh, not exactly like, you know, I wouldn't say she wins the comp. <laughs> um, I love Kira Kira Pre Kira Alamo, dude. Oh my god. This series is the one that was airing the first time I went to Japan, so I definitely have some, like, nostalgia soft place because. This is the series that I heard the music for, like, in stores. This is the series where I, I met them in real life. Look! Actually, this also has Mahotsukai. Actually, no, that is just Mahotsukai. Okay, well, it, it's while Kira Kira was airing, but I think it was before they switched over the mascot show. The theme is very, very firmly baking. In this series, basically, the Cures run a magical patissier called the Kira Kira Patisserie, and they bake sweets that have a magical... <laughs> I don't even know how to describe this. Okay, the official synopsis describes it as a type of energy that resides in sweets called Kira Kira Ru. So they're saying that like desserts and sweets that are made with love and like good baking vibes are full of good baking vibes. I, I don't know. I liked it. <laughs> Now, while the theme was definitely a winner, I'd say the plot... I had a little bit of trouble with the plot. This actually is sad to say, but I stopped watching this one for a bit because I actually kind of just like got bored. The cures we have are Cure Whip, Cure Custard, Cure Gelato, Cure Macaron, Cure Chocola, and Cure Parfait! Six Precure! The cures are lovely. Each of them is designed after a dessert and an animal. People, when this first came out, definitely saw the comparison to Tokyo Mew Mew, but if you actually watch both of them, I found both of them very different and good and separate in their own right. I mean, I have a lot of thoughts about Tokyo Mew Mew, but that's another, that's, a, that's another video. Cure Whip has some really interesting development with her mom being abroad all the time and her missing her mom. I related to that a lot as well because I watched this as I was like moving out and stuff and finishing high school. Cure Custard is probably one of the most unique pre-cure. Uh, I don't know, that's a big statement. Her color is yellow. She is a squirrel and she is a scientist. So she is a short, yellow, pudding squirrel scientist, and I love her with all of my heart. Cure Gelato is like a rock and roll ice cream lion princess. And then we have Macaron and Chocola. Whew. These two are romantically involved, 
and it is not even subtle. Straight up, just had two Precure in love, two girl Precure in love. Yes, Chocolat is like a little masculine and she definitely plays the prince role and she had the shtick at the beginning where like you think she's a dude and then she's not. I guess that's a spoiler, but it's hard to not talk about it. It'd be really hard to talk about this and just omit Cure Chocolat. Macaron is the purple cure. Her dessert is Macaron. Her animal is cat. And she is kind of more like traditional Japanese, like mature, Utsukushi, like beautiful lady, and the Shogola is the androgynous hot boyfriend next door. Um, but it's funny because her dessert is chocolate and her animal is dog, and like dogs are allergic to chocolate. Like, why did they do that? Haha. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like actually losing my voice from talking about Precure for three hours! <laughs> we also have Cure Parfait, who is just wonderful. Um, as a bilingual Canadian, I always appreciate a little bit of French thrown in there, here in there, and she has a lot of French. Her color is kind of green and kind of rainbow. Her animal is Pegasus, and she's just the best. We kind of have one fairy, which is Pecorin. I don't want to talk too much about that again, because like, plot and spoilies and stuff, but I really, really liked Pecorin. She did kind of look a little bald and a little like Albert Einstein-y, but in like a cute, charming peco peco. I very much relate because I also enjoy snacks. With the villains, sadly, I had the same issue that I have had with Mahotsukai and some other Precure seasons in the past where I just feel like they cycle through too many villains too fast and you don't get to be actually invested or fearful or intrigued or just care about any of them. Save for Julio, who's really interesting. Yeah, I found the villains were a little weak and I think that was what kind of made me drop the series and then pick it back up later. The weapons and the attacks are so good. Again, with the baking theme, all of the attacks are just pure desserts. Cure Whip shoots out whipped cream and stuff and like strawberries and shit. Cure Custard has this attack where she like bounces on a giant custard and then this cherry comes and crushes you. <laughs> I'm actually losing my voice. I knew this was gonna be a big video. I just have to power through. I mean, if we're just talking about like favorite moments of each of the characters, Gelato has this thing in her transformation where she pulls up one sock and not the other. How rock and roll is that? <laughs> I want to do that now that I have one tattooed leg and one not leg. I'm like, can I just wear a thigh high on one leg? <laughs> Macaron and Chocola, um, yeah. I don't want to give too much away. But let's just say they're canonically gay. So if you want a Precure with a little bit of LGBT sneaky little, I know we're in Japan, but shh, it's okay, they're just friends. P -p 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 hey, adult audience, guess what? They're gay. P -p 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 a little bit of that in there. I mean, it's available for you. They have a whole love song called Macaronage of Love and Excitement, and it literally mentions marriage. Like, Ah, Miracle Lights out of 10, I give Kira Kira Precure Ella Mode an 8. Hugto Precure! This definitely is the series I was the most not excited for because what is a Hugto? Why is there a baby? Why is her name Yell? What's going on? The themes and branding for this season were so bizarre and all over the place to me that before even the first episode came out, I was like, this year is gonna suck. And guess what? It's one of my favorite seasons of Precure. Literally, don't judge a book by its hug toe. And the Cures basically have to fight to save the future for everyone else from the villain that is trying to stop time forever. This is one of my favorite plots. The motivation that the villain has to do his evil doings is that he just wants time to stop so that no one can feel any more pain, no one can go through any more hardship, but also no one can feel anything happy. Just nothing bad can happen, but also nothing good can happen. Just this, this villain has experienced so much trauma that he just wants the world to 
stop. It is definitely different than all of the just like, I'm being evil cause I want everything to be evil, like for evil's sake kind of motivation. I just, I, I really like what they did, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, the cures that we have are Cure Yell, Cure Ange, Cure Etoile, Cure Machari, and Cure Amour. Cure Yell's thing is cheerleading, that's why her name is Yell. Her catchphrase is Fure Fure, which is like hooray hooray, and it's cheering on her friends and anyone who's like having a hard time or just like friends and family and the world and she just she says it all the time and every single time it gets me I never get tired anytime I know that in the episode if her friend's having a hard time Hannah's gonna show up with her pom-poms and have a sweet little moment where she goes pure, pure, Mina, and I'm gonna lose it the whole anime starts with her cutting her hair because she's like it's time to be a grown woman which is also a great metaphor for the rest of the series I'm realizing now because it's all about becoming an adult and who you're gonna be and growing up in your career and it starts with her like trying to give herself a more mature haircut which goes horribly wrong which I relate to deeply because I've had a lot of bang cutting <laughs> incidents in my day and something that I love about Yell slash Hannah is that that crooked bang cut that she does in episode one stays for the whole anime. I think that's awesome. Ange and Etoile, I don't have a ton to write home about. Ange is into acting and she's kind of following her mom's footsteps as an actor. Um, her theme is angels for some reason. Etoile is a figure skater. She actually has a really cool story and some nice development. I found her a little more developed than uh, Ange. And then we have my favorite duo, Mashalie and Amul. Um, I don't want to talk about them too much, again, because plot and just it is so fun. Their story is so fun and I'd love for you to experience it yourself. Let's just say Mashalie is definitely one of my new favorite characters. I love her. The fairies. Oh dear. Um, this season was reminiscent in the fairies a little bit of Yes Precure 5, I found, because we have a rodent hamstery fairy that turns into a hot man. Harry, bless his heart. Um, Harry Hamu Harry is our main and kind of only fairy here. He runs a shop called Beauty Harry, again reminiscent of Yes Precure 5 with Coco and Nuts' shop. Um, and again, they use that store as kind of their HQ. They come, they hang out, and they take care of the other fairy figure, which is Hugtan. Hugtan is a baby. I don't like anime babies. Hugt, she's okay. I mean, the fact that I don't despise her means they wrote her very well. Because usually if I see an anime baby, I'm like, no thank you, I do not want to be screamed at. I just, I don't know, I get very irritated <laughs> easily by everything. And I just, I can't, I cannot deal with her bullshit. I will never be a mom, sorry. But I don't hate her, so <laughs> that's good. The villains, I give a hard yes. I thought they did the villains really, really well. Um, Charlotte is funny. I found them funny and engaging. They have great development throughout the anime as well. They're not throwaway or anything. I think they did a really good job handling their villains in this season. The weapons and items are fine. I have this. This is actually one of the only like cell phone-like items I have. Ring, ring, hello. Um, I do love the heart. I was not a fan of the transformations of this season. I don't like the weird hug you, like yelling thing they do. I find it a little irritating. Again, I'm easily irritated by all. This is last year's season, so it's still kind of fresh in my mind and hug toe was definitely up there for me. This was the 15th year anniversary, so there was also some crossovers. There was one crossover episode that actually had like Precure All-Stars in it, if I remember that correctly, so that was really cool. Found Hugto definitely a little more deep and hard-hitting and emotional. It was well-directed, dare I say. Dare I say it made me jerk a tear, perhaps. Miracle Lights out of 10 for Hugto. I give it nine. Moving on to the current airing season. I cannot give Star Twinkle like a full entire review, obviously, because we're in the middle of it, but I'm gonna talk about it because it's airing right now and I really like it. So in Star Twinkle so far, we have Cure Star, Cure Milky, Cure Soleil, 
Cure Selene, and Cure Cosmo. The plot so far in Star Twinkle seems to be that they need to revive each of the 12 zodiac sign princesses in order to save the universe. Yeah, if this situation continues, the stars will disappear, meaning Earth and the whole universe will be swallowed by darkness. Oh yeah, okay, so if you, we don't revive all of the zodiac princesses, the stars go out. That is the plot of this one. Sometimes it's easy to forget what the overarching plot is because you're just like, ooh, cute pink girl, alien girl, wow, fighting aliens, fun, and you're like, wait, what, like, what are they doing again? Cure Star so far is a very fun, pink, bright, bubbly lead. Her main personality trait, other than just the regular ganky pink girl, is um, curiosity. Again, she's very into space and constellations. I, she's not so much like, hey, Milky, let me tell you your horoscope, but we all know I would love that. But yeah, she's like a telescope-loving sister. Cure Milky, definite fan favorite, is an actual alien! Alien Precure! Um, she is so cool. There is also kind of a debate going on as to whether she is blue or green. I feel like she is more green, but, but kind of teal. And then we have Soleil, who is the first pretty cure of color. We have our first Hispanic Precure Cure Soleil. She is wonderful so far. Again, we are only a little bit into these series, so we don't know all the deets, but so far, loving her. Cure Selene or Selene, I'm never sure how to say these things that are like translated a million times. She is probably the least interesting of the bunch, but she's still really interesting because I love that her dad is like the men in black ex exterminator guy. Is that men in black? Did they fight aliens? Cure Selene's dad is like the guy that is hunting for supernatural like stuff going on. And I think that's really cool because then when Madoka, her name's Madoka, um, becomes a precure, she has all of these inner like struggles and she's not sure. She's like, oh, I always wanted to please my family and do what's best and like make sure my father approves of me. And now like I'm kind of doing this alien space thing. And like, if he finds out, then like, is my dad gonna exterminate me like the alien I am? And then we have our sixth ranger as Cosmo. Cosmo's probably my favorite. I'm a little bit obsessed with her. Her transformation is just, oh, all of their transformations are beautiful, but Cosmo's, the music, the silhouettes of things that I'm not gonna talk about because it would ruin the plot. Her theme is like triangles and cats and stuff. Anyway, yeah, uh, plot, don't wanna spoil boop boop a doo but she's really cool. They're all really cool. Um, so far, yeah, if you want to keep up to date and if you want to be able to like interact and goss with the current Precure season, definitely hop on Star Twinkle. And that's it. Or is it? Movies. There are a lot of Pretty Cure movies. There's pretty much one like series specific movie per season and then pretty much an All Stars movie per season. So like, I'm not sure when when did they start them? I feel like the first one was fresh. Because otherwise, like, you, yeah, no. Yeah, you can't have all stars with four people. That's not very interesting. For the most part, okay. The movies, you do not have to watch to understand the show. The movies are not canon to the show. Um, the all stars movies are <laughs> quite the beast to tackle because there's like, all Stars DX one two three, and then there's All Stars New Stage one two three, and then there's like Superstars and Dream Stars and and all this weird stuff. Like I said, uh, the movies are not plot relevant to like the plot of the show, so they are all one off. The All Stars movies, I guess you could kind of consider them going together because the cures remember who they are. It's it's not like every single All-Stars movie, all of them are meeting for the first time. In each All-Stars movie, it's just like, you know, they introduce the new team to the rest of them. <sighs> all right, you guys, it took three separate battery charges. Uh, I don't know how many hours, years and years of watching a children's show and some sweaty, sweaty foreheads. <laughs> I hope this was entertaining, at least. Um, if you guys were looking to get into Precure, I hope this answered 
every question you could ever have. And if it did not, then definitely ask more down below and we can have a big Precure Goss. Um, I also wanna mention there are some channels that make Precure content that I absolutely love. I'll link them down below as well. I was gonna say I don't post a lot of Precure content here, but I, <laughs> I guess I kind of do, but I don't post like many actual reviews of it. So if you want to watch people that review it weekly, I really like Azen Zone and Magical Cinnamon on YouTube. You guys are sweet. As well as Tyranno is a new channel I found who does, he's doing this thing called Watch All the Precure where he has full dedicated videos for each season. Those, I have rewatched them over and over and over and over. So if you if you pick one of these that you want to learn more about and you want more info, maybe go check out that guy because um, he has a great playlist. This video's Feature Confetti Club members are Goldie Pirate and Noodle Bunny. Very, very good usernames. Um, thank you guys so much for these absolutely adorable illustrations. I love them very, very much. I love you guys all so, so much and I will see you in the next video, which is not this one because this one is over. Bye!